All right, can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, some things that have been going on in uh, histogramming, both in Python and C++. Let's uh, start, in fact, by taking a look at Python, and we'll, we'll switch over to C++ in a moment. So uh, histogramming is a, uh, a topic where we have really a lot of different ways to, to do this already in Python. There are lots of libraries out there that do histogramming. Um, the, but in this sort of uh, crowded landscape, Almost every one of these has either a very narrow focus, um, and many of these many of these libraries have been abandoned over the years. <coughs> so, sort of the key things here, such as NumPy, really don't give us a histogram as a um, object. It gives us just the array, just can do a, a single histogram. It's not the way that we really work in uh, uh, HEP. And things like PyRoot, still, as you'll see, are a bit are a bit limited, and they require root. And in, in this sort of landscape, there's one thing that's really missing. These libraries really don't talk to each other. Uh, the different libraries for um, uh, arrays really do talk to you together through a common interface. You can work with TensorFlow and convert that to NumPy completely naturally. But you can't do this in histograms. So this is sort of the plan that we've developed in Scikit-Hem for histogramming. Uh, this is the uh, sort of the, the layout. Uh, we're developing a new core histogramming library called Boost Histogram. Um, there will be a uh, user-facing front-end, one's in italic here, not released yet. And then um, there is a uh, this um, conversion library that allows you to take a uh, hist histogram and convert it to a root histogram and to sort of move back and forth between these libraries, which is something that was really sort of missing in this landscape. Okay. So now that I've talked about Python, let's jump back and uh, look at C++ for a moment. There's a library called Boost Histogram. It's part of the Boost standard or the Boost libraries. This library is second only to um, the C++ standard library in its um, in its respect from the, the community. It's often a, a uh, starting point for many of the standard library things that you know of, especially in C++ 11 and, and perhaps. Uh, and this library really is a, a very impressive library. It's extremely flexible. You can build up um, <coughs> This is histogram out of components, and each of these components can be replaced. You can write any of these components. It's um, a, a header-only library. If you're working in C++, this is really worth uh, checking out. Uh, and this library was accepted into Boost, as I mentioned. It was released in Boost 1.7.0, uh, and there's, there are big changes or big improvements in, in 7.1, and then uh, the upcoming 7.2, which should enter beta in about a week. Uh, this means this, is, this library will not be going away you know, anytime soon. This is uh, about as uh, stable as something uh, as you can get. This boost libraries, if the primary author disappears tomorrow, the boost authors <coughs> will at least keep bug fixes, etc., going for years and years and years to come. So this is the picture of a histogram that this library provides. You have this collection of a set of one or more axes and storage. The storage can um, hold different values, so we call accumulators. This could be simple ones like integers or floating points, or it could be any more complicated thing that you want, um, means and, and weights and samples and things. And then um, these axes types are, are uh, can come in a variety of different um, kinds. You can have, like this is an example of a log scale regular axes with regular binning. There's variable binning, a variety of different uh, options there. And again, you can come up with your own. Um, and the storages can be static or dynamic. This is the only library out there that I know of that can do a fully static histogram on the stack. So um, this is sort of an example of what it looks like. I won't go through it in detail. This is but it's really just a few lines. This is a complete example. Um, and this is really creating the histogram with an axis. This is filling it, that's plotting it. These three lines are the ones that interact with histograms. And this is what that outputs. Um, so it even has a fairly nice little uh, output on the standard output. So it's very simple to get started with, and it just supports a tremendous number of things. Uh, and the performance is not bad either. You have, this is the black lines here are, are uh, root six and uh, uh, GSL. And you'll see that if you are um, doing everything completely <coughs> dynamic, you're, you're um, roughly in the same order of magnitude. But then when you start making things static, you can get some, some huge speed ups. So fully static histogram is much faster. Uh, also, if you can fill in chunks, so the ones up here on the top, those are filled by batches rather than fill one at a time. And with that, you can get faster as well. So this is, this is quite nice. 
So let's look at Python. I was talking about C++. We're introducing a new library called Boost Histogram for Python. Um, it's based on, on uh, Boost Histogram. It uses uh, state of the art PyBind 11 and is a zero dependency uh, build. So Boost Histogram only depends on header only parts of Boost. This also depends on only header part only things and uh, it builds where you have a C++14 compiler. Um, and there's sort of four key tenets here. Uh, we worked on the design. We wanted this to be uh, as flexible as possible inside, the, uh, inside a, a dynamic Python environment. Speed was important and uh, we had to, had to get the distribution right. So for the design, it really does look a lot like the C++ version. It's designed to stay as close as, as reasonably possible to Pythonizations. So here you see that the building a histogram, this is now a 2D histogram, is, is quite similar. Um, and then you can do the fill in, in 1.72, you actually have, you'll have you have the fill method over here too. So this has also been influencing the C++ one and some features have been, been coming back in, uh, including that, uh, that fill that you saw. So these are some of the different ways you can um, manipulate <coughs> histograms. They just behave sort of as you would naturally do. You can add them, you can um, scale them, et cetera. Uh, accessing axes is extremely natural. You can access all the axes uh, at once if you'd like, um, or you can access them one at a time. If you just say hist.axes.centers and not, you don't ask for a single one, you'll actually get a nice um, uh, array of, of all of the centers in, uh, <coughs> as a tuple. And then you can just feed that directly into those plotting libraries and it'll just uh, broadcast and work. Um, you can fill, you can support weighted and sample fills depending on what sort of storage you're using. And then um, you can convert to the sort of NumPy style tuple that you're used to getting out. Um, and there, we even provide some uh, NumPy mimicking functions so that if you want to just incrementally convert to boost histogram, you can. So you can construct your histogram with standard NumPy, the uh, NumPy constructor, and then you can ask for a, eventually ask for the boost histogram object out and manipulate it in this nice way. And it supports all, you know, most of the things you'd expect from a nice library. Another thing we worked on uh, quite hard was the uh, something we call UHI, Unified Histogram Indexing. This is a way to index histograms um, and these, uh, <coughs> these things that uh, you index with can be shared among libraries. So for example, if you want to access the, a value in histogram, you can just put in the coordinate. You can then surround it with loc if you want to get the, if you want to describe this in axes coordinates instead of, instead of bin coordinates. Um, you can access underflow and overflow bins. Um, setting works as well. And then we have a uh, collection of ways to um, to slice. So you can slice out histograms. These are just these locs just work in the slices. Um, you can sum over um, an axis. So this is how you project. Um, and it's really nice because you actually just describe what you want to have happen on each axis. So in a single line, you can do all of your slicing, your rebinning, your projecting, uh, including in data coordinates if you want in one line. Um, so if you want a, a bit of a description of how that works and things, there's some documentation here. These are the different axis types. Um, one thing you don't see in very many other libraries is a circular axis, but it's quite natural in, in many places. Uh, there are some pre-built transforms, things like that. Regular axes are faster than um, when you specify each bin, but you, uh, edge, but you can do that. So this often allows us to be much faster than NumPy. And then um, you can even put in category axes, which are really nice if you have um, like diversity <coughs> background or something like that. That can just naturally become a axes uh, index now. For the performance, we're around factor of two or so faster than NumPy. Uh, as long as we are matched up with the uh, with the highly optimized NumPy, if we're not with the highly optimized NumPy, um, then um, we, like for example, 2D regular binning, NumPy doesn't have, it just converts everything to variable edge bins, uh, and then factor six to 10 faster for a normal size histogram. Of course, we scale better than NumPy does, so it depends on the number of bins. <laughs> and then um, for distribution, this is something that was very important, and it's really affected lots of different things in, um, in scikit-hep, we needed to make sure that this, that saying pip install boost histogram always works. It needs to be fast, it needs to work no matter where you are or what you're doing. So in order to do this, we built uh, tools which are actually now being used across scikit-hep and other packages. If you've installed iMenui lately, it only took a few seconds, I expect, and that's because of this um, wheel <coughs> technology. The wheel, of, as you may know, is the uh, binary format for pip. So these are the different platforms we support with wheels. 3.8 is coming soon for, for uh, 
Mini Linux and, and Windows. Hopefully, we're waiting on Azure on that one. Um, but otherwise, we support all of these. And then if you don't have, if you don't get the wheel, if you're on an odd Linux system that's not Mini Linux compatible, um, then all you need is a C++14 compiler, and it will build. Um, no other uh, libraries or anything else needed on your system. And then um, we also support Chrome to of course. So um, you'll see that there. And uh, you can build it straight from GitHub as well. So either of these two things will should install it for you. So let me take just a few seconds to talk about the, uh, the rest of the, the ecosystem. Uh, the idea is that Boost Instagram will stay very, very focused and it will be just a view into the C++ library. And Hist is sort of the place where um, plotting adapters and various other things like that will end up uh, going. So um, this should make it easier to work inside a, an, an, an analysis or something like that where you say you may want plotting or you may want um, easy, easy serialization or interaction with, with other fitter, fitters and things like that. So that's sort of the place, uh, place for this. Uh, if you're interested, we are still we're looking for ideas for Hist. Um, that will be um, developed sort of over the next um, year or so. So, uh, you know, if, and especially if you happen to be a student who'd be interested in writing this, this would be pretty much pure Python. So, um, I'd be happy to, to mentor a student in this, in uh, developing some of these things, things like plotting. Um, there's, there's just a lot of fairly easy things that can be done there. And then I, I mentioned Agast as well. I, I like the description of Agast on the web page. Agast is a histogram library that does not build histograms. It does not plot them. Um, it converts them. That's, it has a very narrow focus. And um, it's really a memory format um, based on flat buffers. And it can convert back and forth between histograms. And it, it sort of has to get all of these different types of, of binnings, and it can convert between these uh, different places. Um, and it's really focused on conversions. So this will enable this, this talking about loose histogram with, with root and various other things. So hopefully I've made the case that uh, Boost Histogram itself is a strong foundation that um, the, for uh, Boost Histogram for Python is really a, a core um, library that other things can use. Hist will be our, our front end, but hopefully it can be used in other places like Lafia, and um, a gas will sort of glue all the rest together. <coughs> Thank you, any questions? <laughs> Currently, it's a, a feature of the Python version. Um, there may be uh, some of the ideas from that may go back when go into Boost Histogram. Boost Histogram itself has a, a sort of a little bit more traditional approach, but it can actually fuse the operations. Um, so right now, it's it's a it uses a bit different syntax. So that's available in Boost Histogram Python though as well. I'm going to join the meeting, and I have two questions. Is there any support for sparse histograms, sparse multidimensional histograms? For sparse, so in Boost Histogram, the um, I believe the answer is yes. In Boost Histogram, the, the C++ version, that's not a, an initial feature. And you can use these uh, categorical axes, so you can say, so you can um, uh, do integer cat, um, categories, and it can grow. So every time it sees a new one, it adds it, but the actual memory will still be dense. Um, and and the second question is, uh, is there this nice uh, way to print the histogram to the terminal? Like in boost histogram? In the uh, email? In SSCPCII. I mean, just to print the histogram with this uh, service. Oh, to ask. Yes, to ask. Is that, is that, oh, that to nice ask. printout you have? So the, that, that printout um, was added not too long ago to boost histogram in C++. Mm -hmm. That's not available in the Python part at the moment. Um, it does have, they do have nice wrappers that'll tell you what the axes are, and they'll tell you what the sums are of the different uh, things. So you can actually see like if you fill in things, you can see that something changes. Um, but there's no built-in support for uh, like a, an ASCII printout at the moment. Uh, I love that printout because it reminds me when I first got into energy physics <laughs> 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 So let's see, uh, two quick questions. One is, how much intellectual effort goes into building that myriad of wheels uh, and maintaining that humongous matrix you have? 
so that's a that's one question. The second question is you're talking about building this this front end, this uh, kiss to, to do the plotting. And it strikes me that one of the advantages <coughs> of um, a gas is that you can move easily between systems. So for example, not every everybody has to build a plotting now. <coughs> that was uh, the case. So maybe you could explain a little bit more why you think it's worth investing time on uh, KIST uh, as opposed to on the translation and, and uh, other visualization libraries. Okay, so answering your first question. First, for the um, for building that, it was, a lot, it was quite a bit of work to set it up. But uh, maintaining it's not too bad, it all runs on Azure. Um, at some point, I really would like to try to move it over, see if I can move a portion of it over to the actions part of GitHub Actions. And then you could pretty much just say, I want wheels for Windows, and then specify your versions. But that's, that's something that will take some time and I've not uh, done yet. This is, it's not too hard. So I have a uh, separated piece, that I think there was a link there, and I have a blog post that feel free to read. It describes in detail how all this works. Um, three blog posts, actually. Um, and uh, if you do that, that'll sort of give you a, a feel for what it takes. Right now, it's mostly copy that in, make a few, you know, whatever modifications locally you need. It's supposed to be pretty much shared. The original idea is it'd be a Git submodule, but unfortunately, Azure doesn't check out Git submodules before it does the configuration stage. So it can't be a Git submodule. That would have been a centrally managed thing. For your second question, for the HIST, um, there are just there are often things that people want, and they're just they're not available in these other things. So FIST is probably the most um, uh, mature object type. Um, histogram library out there, but um, and ideally, Blue Histogram would be the back end for that at some point because it's quite slow at filling. But um, there are things that, that we want, and it would be maybe just a visualization library and then you know, a filling library. <laughs> could we separate things? It could definitely be separated, and it might be. So that was that was like a collection of ideas, and it had all those other parts, Aghast and Blue Histogram are the important parts, and we have spent all our time on that right. and not on this. Um, I think that is as I help this become a back end for Kafia and some of these other things, that uh, the rest will be used there. Okay. Thanks, Akeem. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you.